Well hello, welcome back. In this video I would like us to revisit the topic of feminized science, specifically the feminization of physics. Now as some of you may be aware, I have several videos relating to the general topic and one in particular addresses the feminization of A-level physics. That video is part two in the series titled Moriarty and the Art of Political Science. In this video however, I hope to present a more positive message all is not doom and gloom. Scientists are beginning to push back, and I think we are seeing a distinct change in the scientific zeitgeist. Today I would like us to consider the Australian Day Address given by the quantum physicist Professor Michelle Simmons. Professor Simmons obtained a physics PhD in the UK and now works in Australia. She was granted Australian citizenship in 2007 and works at the University of New South Wales where she leads a world-class team researching the practical application of quantum computing. Let's listen to what Professor Simmons had to say in her Australian Day speech relating to the feminization of the physics syllabus. And for what we're planning to do, we all need to be. Quantum physics is hard. Technology at the forefront of human endeavor is hard. But that is what makes it worthwhile. I strongly believe that the things that are most worthwhile in life are those that are very hard to do. Which brings me back to the beginning and to the fundamental lessons I learned as a child. When I was growing up in England before I came to Australia, I always knew I liked doing the things that were difficult, things that you had to try really hard to succeed at, but that when you did, the euphoria was immense. It is interesting, therefore, to admit now that I actually gave up physics as O-level uh, because I also really enjoyed biology, chemistry, history, and English literature. And career advice at the time encouraged people to follow the subjects they enjoyed the most. But shortly into my O-level year, I realized I'd made an awful mistake. While I enjoyed those subjects, they didn't challenge me. And I realized that my greatest joy was solving difficult problems that were complex and not so instantly rewarding to do. The consequence for me was I ended up doing physics outside of school and it took me a while to catch up. But the lesson and the important lesson I learned is you can always do the things you enjoy and find easy outside of work. However, problem solving and technical skills, they require consistent effort and they're not so easy to pick up any time in life. For me, it was better to do the things that have the greatest reward, things that are hard, not easy, and things that will continue to challenge you throughout your life. Now there's a message here for our educators, our scientists, and for all Australians. First, science education. Great teachers with high expectations challenge their students to be the best they can be. However, equally important are the curricula that they teach. And one of the few things that horrified me when I came to Australia was to discover that several years ago, the high school physics curricula was feminized. In other words, to make it more appealing to girls, our curricula designers substituted formula with essays. What a disaster. From the students coming through, I see little evidence this has made any difference. And indeed, I see many students complaining that the physics curricula has left them ill-equipped for university. In my experience, there is a big cost in this type of thinking. When we reduce the quality of education that anyone receives, we reduce the expectations we have of them. And if we want young people to be the best they can be at anything, we must set the bar high and expect them to jump over it. My strong belief is that we need to be teaching all students, both girls and boys, to have high expectations of themselves. So Professor Simmons describes the changes made to the physics curriculum as an attempt to make physics more appealing to girls. She went on to describe the effect on student learning as a disaster, hardly a glowing endorsement of current educational practice. She is not alone in this assessment. Other scientists and mathematicians working in education have come to the same conclusion. Professor Simmons' broadside on feminized curricula has the support of the New South Wales Education Standards Authority, which intends to introduce new science courses in order to address the exact concerns expressed by Professor Simmons. The new physics and chemistry courses will have a greater focus on mathematical applications as a way to describe the concepts and a strong emphasis on practical investigation. So the shift is away from context and will now focus on concepts instead. Dr. Mark Butler, a principal writer of the National Physics Curriculum, said he had been told by universities that for the past 15 years, students were coming to physics courses underprepared. He stated, and I quote, 
several universities, including Newcastle University and the University of New South Wales, have even changed their first year courses to teach what would have previously been high school level physics. He also said they have had to soften it and slow down production because the kids aren't ready for that level of mathematics. He went on to say that our social science courses aren't forced to study physics, so I'm not sure why physics teachers are forced to study sociology. When I cross a bridge, I'd much rather know the engineer knew the equations rather than the sociology and the history of bridge building, which I think is a good point. But the lack of preparation was not the only issue that was of concern to Dr. Butler, and in relation to gender participation in physics, he said the following. The number of females taking physics went down after the changes to the new syllabus in 1999-2000. It actually decreased. When I talk to female physics students, they have the same concerns as the boys about all the sociology and history in the course. They'd much rather be doing science. So it seems that the feminization of the physics curriculum is not only viewed as a disaster by scientists, but it has resulted in the reduction of the numbers of female students who wish to study physics. But the good news is, at least for Australian students, is it will be back to the future in physics education in New South Wales schools, and a revised syllabus is to be introduced where context in the teaching of physical sciences is to be set aside with a polite but firm thanks but no thanks. But back now to Professor Simmons and her Australian Day speech. In that speech, she had clearly articulated the long-term impact of the curriculum changes in students arriving at the University of New South Wales, where she leads the Centre for Quantum Computing and Communications Technology. She stated that, From the students coming to the university, I see little evidence that the changes have made any difference, and indeed, I see many students complaining that physics curriculum has left them ill-equipped for university. She has used the example of final year students being asked to write essays about the environmental impact of a nuclear power plant, rather than using maths to describe the physics of how power was generated in the first place. She has stated, and I quote, Physics is about looking at equations, it's deriving things, it's understanding things from a mathematical viewpoint as well as a descriptive viewpoint. An example I've heard of is to describe how a nuclear power plant works and its impact on the environment. And I do really think that within that you need to have some equations which would get them to address the physical structure of how energy is transferred so you have that critical thinking that physics normally demands. In her Australia Day speech, she highlighted the great cost to students of the feminised approach to teaching physical sciences. She stated that, and I quote, When we reduce the quality of education that anyone receives, we reduce expectations we have of them. So at least in Australia, the winds of change are blowing. They have identified a serious flaw and are moving swiftly to fix the issue in the usual no-nonsense way, which typifies the Australian character. In so doing, they're likely to gain an advantage over the UK in particular. I suspect the Australians are already leading by half a decade in the potential practical application of quantum technology, and by 2020, their universities will be able to enjoy a student in take well prepared to engage in physics at this new and challenging frontier. The United Kingdom and the United States needs to pay close attention to what is happening in the Australian education system, and we must be willing to emulate the changes being made if we want to participate in the new physics of the 21st century. We end our adventure at this point. I hope you found something of interest in this video. If you would like to support my channel, I now have a Patreon page. If you're unable to support my work through Patreon, then you can share, like or comment. It's all good. Thank you for watching.